get ourselves in a posture of prayer. I'm going to start off with a scripture. Um, my scripture is coming from Psalms 29 and 2, and it states, Ascribe to the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. God, the scripture says, worship God, you, in the splendor of your holiness, God. Worship you, God. God, so we thank you, God. I want to start off by saying, God, I thank you, God. God, we thank you, God. We worship you, God. God, we honor you, God, and we praise you, God, with all that we have on the inside of us, God. We glorify you, God. We honor you, God, because of who you are, God, because of what you stand for, God. Because of all that you are capable of doing, God. We worship you, God, and we thank you, God, that we are who we are, God. That we are here, God. That we are here, God. God, that you allowed us to see another day, God. You allow each and every one of us to wake up to see another day, God. You have kept us throughout this week, God. God, we thank you, God, that we are established in you, God. We are who we are because of you, God, and we can't do nothing without you, God. We can't do nothing without you, God. God, we love you with all of our hearts, all of our minds, and all of our souls, God. Holy Spirit, we ask that you have your way. We ask that you continue to lead us and guide us. We ask that you continue to put us in a posture to receive from you, God. Continue to put us in a posture, God, to be able to witness to the lost souls, God. To be able to tell people about your goodness, God. God, we know that this world is full of so much hatred, God. But, God, we are here to spread the love, God. We are here to tell about who you are, God. We are here to show about how good you are in our lives, God. God, we ask that you allow us, allow our lifestyles, God, to be the witness symbols to the people that we are talking to, God. Allow them to see who you are through us, God. Allow our lights to shine, God. Continue to allow us to be the light in this world full of darkness, God. We ask that you continue to use us, God. God, we thank you for our campus pastors. We thank you for Pastor Ray, God. We thank you for Pastor Danette, God. God, we thank you for their obedience, God. We thank you for their loving hearts, God. We thank you, God, for allowing them to be able to pour into us, God. We thank you for allowing them to be able to love us, God. We thank you for allowing them to be able to take the time and teach us, God. They love us enough to teach us. They love us enough to pour into us, God. And we thank you for that. We thank you for having pastors that love us that much, God. God, we thank you for our overseers, God. We thank you for all that they have done and all that they are continuing to do, God, in each and every one of our lives, God. God, and we thank you for the guest speaker tonight, Lord Jesus, God. And we ask that you just have your way in the service. We ask that you touch each and every one of our hearts. We ask that you allow the speaker to come through with an on-time word. We ask that you allow the speaker word, God, to touch each and every one of us where we are, God. Because we all might not be where we want to be, God, but we know that we're going to continue to move, God. We're going to continue to move. We ask that you allow your will to be done, God, in our life. Allow your will to be done in our life, God. Less of us and more of you. God, we thank you, God. We honor you and we praise you, God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Come on, let's give God a praise. Amen, amen. Come on, Internet Church, those that are watching at home, come on, give God a praise, for you know God is good, God is great, his mercy endures forever. Uh, man, it, we, we serve an awesome God in an awesome time. Uh, you understand? An awesome God in an awesome time. So, so God, we would just want to say thank you as, as the prayer that, that went up said thank you for everything. Thank you for speaking into our lives. Thank you for allowing us to be the witness. And, and so, people of God, tonight, man, we're just so great that you have followed the leading of the Spirit of God to, to just log in tonight. And for those that are in the facility, we thank you as well, just following the leading of the Holy Spirit. But, but you know, as we do, we have many 
uh, uh, through Apostle Char- through our general overseers, Apostle Charlie and Prophet Vicky, y'all know we have uh, covenant relationships with, with 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 other mighty men and women of God, fivefold ministry gifts, and 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 that's before you you've heard you've heard us. Um, some of them have come into the house to speak what thus says the Lord, and, and and man, there's no thing nothing different tonight. We got we got. Uh, I know he's a son. He's a son of apostle and. And, and prophet and the daughter of apostle and prophet and, 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 and friends. I really would like to say that friends. He, he's definitely a friend of mine. They are definitely friends of ours. And, 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 man, I'm excited to hear what the Lord is going to say through this mighty vessel. Uh, man, yeah, yeah. Hey, make sure, hey, make sure you got your volume up. Make sure you got your notebook out. Make sure that, that you're hearing because, again, as, as we said, we, we're living in a critical time, and it, it is it's critical that we have ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. And so without further ado, again, make sure you got everything together. I'm trying to give some, trying to give some of y'all, you know, that come in a little late. I know you was, you came off work, you had to get dinner done, or you had to go get food, you had to kind of wind down. So I'm trying to give you a moment uh, for, for you to get logged in, to get settled down so you can hear what the Spirit is saying. But we have, uh, 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 again, a, a mighty man of God, a friend of mine, Pastor Andre Chambers from One Generation Church. He will be be, be sharing what, is, what God has put on his heart tonight. And again, I am excited. I know you are excited because, again, the, the brother look good, too. You know, he look, look good. I got to give it to him. He look good. But, uh, but again, without further ado, we, we pray, man of God, Pastor, whatever God has put on your heart, go ahead and minister whatever time you need. Go ahead and minister whatever you feel led of the spirit uh please just move according to the spirit and again we thank you so much you and your lovely wife we thank you pastor anitra as well and so again family friends uh visitors guests if you're new to this please welcome our friend our brother pastor andre chambers Amen. One more time, let's really bless the Lord in this place. Man, I'm telling you, um, I want to do what's a, a appropriate uh, before I even uh, begin. I know they, they lifted up all the, um, the names, but I definitely want to give honor um, to the general overseers, uh, Apostle Charlie, uh, Prophet Vicki Ammons. Uh, that dynamic duo is so precious to us, and we thank God for them. And then uh, to the set of angels that God has placed in this house, uh, pastors Ray and Danette Miller, uh, give God a praise for them. Amen. Um, man, just what a wonderful, wonderful couple, uh, so genuine and authentic, and we thank God for our friendship and, and the relationship that we have with one another. And then... I just want to say thank you to the leadership of this house. Um, Y'all a class act. Uh, The people that are in here tonight to offer their support have been just uh, exceptional. And so we want to give God a praise for all of you uh, tonight. Amen. Amen. And then I want to uh, honor my uh, bride, my beautiful wife of 33 years, Pastor Anitris Chambers. Amen. 33 years. Amen. So (laughs) we're going to not delay and jump uh, right into uh, the word. Um, If you would go to first Peter chapter four. And before um, I read that this is going to lead in, into it, to be honest with you. This is going to lead into it. Um, back last year, uh, November the 30th, uh, was at a service at our church. And then once I left and uh, we went to the restaurant immediately, um, I was feeling off a little bit, not feeling good at all. Uh, we went home, um, and then I uh, shared with um, 
my wife that I would go to the doctor. Uh, there was the 30th, was the November 30th, right after Thanksgiving, and then I went home and went to the doctor the next day uh, to get checked out. I thought it was just you know flu symptoms and everything. And so uh, they said that when they did the test on me uh, to, to make sure I didn't have COVID, they said, if we text you, you good. But if we call you, you not. And uh, so I go home that morning. I went home. And that afternoon, I got the phone call. It's December the 1st. And they said, hey, you, you tested positive for COVID. And I said, OK. All right. But then when I got off the phone, hey, this was real. Um, what I'm going to say to you is this is something that God said to me. And so I believe that this is where we uh, are as a body of believers. One of the things he said to me while I was on my back and in my uh, dealing with this was out of Second Corinthians 4. I'm just going to read a portion of that, 11, 15 through 17. And it talks about, hey, yes, we live under constant danger of death because we serve Jesus. Right. You just, just hear what I just said? We live in danger because we serve Jesus. And he says, so that the life of Jesus will be evident in our dying bodies. Verse 15, all of this is for your benefit, though. And as God's grace reaches more and more people, there will be great thanksgiving and God will receive more and more glory. Do you mean that God gets glory when you suffer for Christ? Yes, he does. Hallelujah. So verse 16 says, this is why we never give up. I'm, I, I, we're going somewhere with this. Though our bodies are dying, this is what he told me now. He says, though your body is dying, our spirits are being made renewed every day. Here it is. It kicked in the next day. Monday, they said you positive. Tuesday is when everything kicked in. The temperature, the, the, the fatigue, the, the, the not eating, everything kicked in. And he told me, though your body is outwardly dying, but I'm renewing your spirit every day. For our present troubles are small and they won't last very long. That's the light affliction. <laughs> Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. This is what he said to me while I was lying on my bed and sick. And he told me that there's a production of his glory that is taking place. You and I are a part of this production team. So what is this glory that he's looking for? See, his glory now comes when the kingdom comes. When his will is done and the kingdom comes, you will see the glory of God. But there's something unique to bring it to pass. And that's what we're talking about today. Now, First Peter, you want to see the glory? <laughs> this is how you see it. First Peter 4 and 10, it reads it this way. God, I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. God has given each of you a gift. <laughs> from his great variety of spiritual gifts. And then he says, use them well to do what? Serve one another. Yes, sir. See, this is the picture of the kingdom. I'm going to say it one more time. God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. This whole thing was a wake-up call. He's made calls to the church. We're talking about the glory, but when will they see it? God says, when you use your gift well to serve one another. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his word. And all God's people say amen, amen. and amen. All right, let's go. Here it is. I'm going to use out of this talking about Jesus and what he did in John 13 as an example of this service that we are to provide for one another. See, God gives us gifts, but I'm not really here to talk about the gifts today. I'm not. I'm really talking about the service because if we don't serve, nobody will get the gift. 
Hmm. We should use our gifts to do good to others because people are watching your life. Your life is a letter and people are reading it. You want to know what they're looking for. They're looking for what we always be talking about, this kingdom of God. Jesus says, when you pray, say, thy kingdom come, when, and thy will be done, where? On earth. But they will not see this kingdom come if his will is not being done. And his will is that you serve others. You got to serve others. Then now we are living the example of Christ. To serve others well means we need to have faith that we're ultimately serving someone greater. Here's a quote right here from Martin Luther King Jr. Life's most urgent question is, what are you doing for others? Uh -huh. <sighs> Jesus. And see, I don't want to get a play on words here when I get ready to say this because we hear different words like volunteer, but volunteer is a little bit different from service. See, volunteer is a choice, but your service is a call. God has called you to serve. Hallelujah. And what we have to make sure is when we listen and say we are obeying God, you will not get any more spiritual than your obedience. So wherever you stop serving God or obeying God, there is where your spirituality ended. And the way you know you are being obedient because what he's looking for is do he see the service? See, Jesus chose all 12 disciples is all I want to let you know. And as we use this as an example, Jesus said, I'm going to, after they come out of the field, I'm going to bring you all in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to perform something for you. See, so he brought them all in and he told them what he wanted to do to them. He wanted to wash their feet. <laughs> Jesus says that I'm looking at all of you, and if you don't let me do this, you can't have no place with me in the kingdom. Now look at this, because this is an example of what the kingdom is about. Jesus brings them all up there, and what he's going to model for us is the service that he is requiring does not only get released to those that you like, but also to those that you don't like. Because <laughs> two things are at place now with Jesus is modeling. One, his love for everybody. But two is his forgiveness towards everybody. There's two things that Jesus is working on here. So now when Judas comes up to Jesus, because he's in the line too. If it was you and me, we probably know what we would do. Jesus, Judas, come up there. Man, get your feet out of here. I ain't, I ain't. Washing your feet. No, no, no. Not Jesus. Jesus is trying to model something for us that is called service to others. So now, even though Jesus knew Judas was going to hook him up, he still washed his feet, Pastor Ray. See, that's an act of love and forgiveness. You want to know how you do this? You got to serve. This is what the kingdom looks like. So the person you serving has, doesn't have to be, do everything right with you. That person could also wrong you. And Jesus expects you still to serve them. Here's Matthew 5 and 16. Because I don't want to deal with these gifts if Y'all know them in this house. One of the things that Pastor Ray did when he came out there with the men, and I just want to say thank you so much for your obedience to share that word. But he took the scripture that we used, and we talked about the responsibility of man. I was looking at one portion of it. I was breaking it down for everybody to preach, uh, to, to, to take that one. But what God spoke to you about was that all of it is the responsibility. So now we could talk about the gifts and y'all are very aware of the gifts in this house. And so when you talk about Romans 12 and how it breaks down through three through eight, the minister, uh, the motivational or inspirational gifts that you have, all of them, even though serving is one of them, none of them will come to pass without that. That's it. That's it. Then we talk about ministerial, apostate, prophet, 
Oh, pastor, evangelist, and teacher. But then you're talking about manifestation, gifts of the Spirit in 1 Corinthians 16. None of these happen without one key thing that has to be done. That is service to others. So here it is, Matthew 5 and 16 says it this way. So let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. What is this light? This light is your service for others. This is what he's looking for. Could that be why do we see so much darkness on the face of this earth? It's because we don't see enough service for others. No service, no light. We got to get back to, and, and, and this is why God shuts it down. He shuts it down so we don't lose what he intended for us to be doing in order to manifest his glory. Jesus, and when I tell you that service is a call, Jesus was called to serve us his life. And it's required of us to do the same. And two things will take place. It says it right here that they will see good works and the glory for your father. But that's only if we make sure that they see the light. How are they going to see the light? Don't miss this. You got to get back to serving others. This is why this earth, man, if we served others, we will see an end to homelessness. If we started serving others, we will see an end to this joblessness. If we started serving others, we'll end poverty. It goes back to God saying, what are you doing with the gift that I, call, I gave you? It's about a service to others. So that now Jesus is going to model this. Serving is the light. No light is because there's no service. And if you serving these two things, I promise you will take place. You will always see, Pastor Ray, good works taking place. And there always will be glory to the Father. But it goes back to something. We got to get back to letting the light shine. And how does the light shine? Is when you and I can start serving others. Remember, Jesus said this even in the same text in John. He says this. Now, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. He wasn't just talking about the communion. He was talking about your service to others. He says, as often as you do this, I need you to be serving other people. Hallelujah. So when Jesus was a man and we learn about him in, the, in, in Matthew, it talks about this in 11 chapter. It says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. And he says, man, you, I, I, I'm going to give you some rest. Yes, sir. Then he tells you, take my yoke. What is the yoke? Your service for others. And then he says, do this, but you got to learn of me. You got to learn how did Jesus do this? Oh, my God. Because I want you to be prepared for this one thing now that's going to happen when you start serving. Serving others can get you in some trouble. Welcome to the kingdom of God. Jesus wants us to understand that in John 11, you go back and read it in your own devotion, 45 through 53. All Jesus was doing is what the father told him. And yet they, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the religious leaders in that day and time, do you know what they did? They called a council or a meeting. If it was present day, old deacon board meeting. That's what it is, old deacon board meeting, trying to meet on something. Mm -hmm. They called a meeting, and this is what they said. Watch this. They said this. They says, man, if we don't stop him, the people will believe on him. Well, that's what he, they were supposed to do. But then they came back and said, if they believe on him, we will lose our positions. So you get to mean, you mean to tell me they were more concerned about their titles and their position than the promise that God had made them. We see that even today. Because see, Jesus is going to show us something. 
Jesus is not only going to have the reputation, but he's also going to show us the character. And that is the problem right now. Too many people don't recognize that positions of power are positions for serving others. That's what your position of power and influence is used for, to serve somebody else. But we miss it. We get these positions and, we, and we're more concerned about the title and don't even have the function. We're more concerned sometimes with the reputation and don't even have the character. And then we misrepresent. What God was looking for, God was looking for, he says, man, thy will be done. He says, the kingdom will come and then his will is being done. But how is this going to be seen when you start serving others? I'm just speaking this to whoever's looking, who's in here. I mean, purpose this in your heart. To, to starting tomorrow, find a way that you can say, God, give me an opportunity where I can serve others. Give you an opportunity. Watch what takes place. I'm a, oh, my God, when you see it. Every time Jesus did that, everybody, not only were they blessed, but so will, so was you. So will you. So will you. Not only will you bless others, but, they, but you will be blessed. Jesus said this. In Luke 22, he heard them. This is, the, this, is, this is where sometimes the body got to grow, got to grow. So within minutes, they were bickering over who would be the greatest. Jesus makes this statement, man. Kings like to throw their weight around. This is in the Message Bible. He says, kings like to throw their weight around, and people in authority like to give themselves fancy titles. It's not going to be that way with you. Let the senior among you become the junior and let the leader act the part of a servant. We're talking to you tonight about, sir, God shuts this thing down. I believe the church has be, had gotten predictable in a lot of its ways. And so God is not seeing what he wanted. So he shuts it down and he told me he was making house calls. I lost my brother during this time, and I was angry about it. And God told me, again, during my little COVID experience, he says, for your brother, I told him to come here. But for you, I'm telling you, draw near. See, when, 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 when God calls you, you can't complain about the destination to where he tells you to go. Because what he's trying to do is, again, he's trying to let the light be seen. He's going to position us. This is a great time. I'm just telling some of you, man, you, just, you ought to give God a praise just for knowing that God want to use you right now. This is the best time for the church. Oh, I'm talking about serving others. We see so many examples. You know what the de definition is. You know deacon means diakonos, but serving uh, diakonia. It all deals with an act of helping or assistance given to someone. That's all what it is. Now, so now there could be a time when we are living our lives, though, by the position, but it don't line up with the function. So God wants you to line it up. So that not only do you have the title, you got the function. Not only do you have the reputation, you got the character to match. Because here's a clear flow is all I want to tell you. Matthew 20, verse 28. He's saying something here. <laughs> Jesus. It says it this way in the New Living Translation. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom. He gave his ransom, his life as a ransom for many. 
See, serving others will always release the power of God. If you want to see the power of God, this is what he's trying to get the church to do. Show the power of God, but it'll show up when you're serving others. People are looking for this thing. They're looking for this. I'm going to give you three keys that you must walk in in order to see or in order to serve others. Because God has a plan for our life. He says this in Jeremiah, I know the thoughts. <laughs> I know the plans that I have. Thoughts of good, not evil, and bringing you to an expected end. What if he allows these tragedies to be an opportunity for him to show us how to walk with him and release a lasting contentment and commitment that cannot be shaken? All of this is what God is trying to get us to do. So these gifts, you've seen them all, and everybody has to get out of chasing the gift. Yes, sir. The Bible says the gift will make room for you. How did it make the room? Because you purpose to serve others with it. Mm. Here's your three keys. And we closing. Number one key. Humility. This is the key. This is so God can equip you and it will reveal who you are. See, Philippians talks about being found in the appearance just like a man. Jesus did what? He humbled himself. Uh-huh. By becoming obedient, I told you. Even unto death. And it's not always a physical death, but sometimes it's a death or a dying of some things in your life. Can you, can you humble yourself and become obedient to that? To let that relationship, to let that, to let that job go, to, to let, that, let that, this activity go. Can you let that thing go and become obedient unto death? Can you humble yourself? Humility, though, is what God will define your character. This is who you are. See, first you are, then you become. You are leading, and then you become a leader. You are humble, and what they'll see you become and demonstrate is humility. Second, serving others. It's in this house. I've seen it. Born in it. Served in it. Released from it teachable see teachable will reveal now what you become you show me somebody that's humble and they become a person that's very teachable show me somebody that's not teachable I'll show you somebody that's not real humble Jesus modeled this he used Paul, and Paul began to teach Timothy, and he says this in 2 Timothy. He says, man, and the things that you have heard of me among many witnesses, commit thou to faithful men and women that they may be able to teach others also. This is what it's about. See, when you, when you remain teachable, you'll be able to handle changes. Yeah, people struggle with change. 
hey, 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 this is how we're doing service now. Teachable. <laughs> I, don't, I just said that. Just some of y'all started laughing. <laughs> Teachable. We had to deal with that. Hey, this is the way we're going to do things now. Because there was some humility missing, we couldn't teach them what we wanted to do. And now we cannot properly serve others. Don't miss this assignment that God has us on. The call is that you serve. And then he'll tell you now where the assignment is. But you got to make sure you're doing this first. You have to remain humble, secondly, teachable. This will edify you too. It'll build you up. Again, it will make you become. You will be more like Christ. This is who we say we're going to be after. And this is what it talks about in Proverbs 22. That's why we don't see this. Teachable. The Bible says train up a child. In the way that they should go. Man, I was walking to Walmart the other day, and I'm going to deal with this with this with, uh, come Father's Day with their identity. Literally, I walked in Walmart the other day, and I didn't even really make it in there. And, and, and all I saw was stripy draws, red draws, blue draws. I'm like, what in the world is going on? I, I'm being real here. When I was growing up, I was, I ain't 34, 30 now, but I was 34, 30. I'm walking by faith, amen? amen. But when you bought your pants, they was 34, 30. That's what you wore, that's what you bought. Who, who, who does this today? Now, you know you weigh 32, 30, but you buying pants 26, 20, or 30. What? Teachable. This next generation has to have somebody to pass the baton to. And they got to see what is this glory all about. To break it down in simplistic terms, it is the service to others. That's what the kingdom is all about. Jesus served us his life. But he told them in Hebrews, we got to study how he did it. Teachable. Kids now going to buy pants way too small for them. It's crazy to me. Okay, let me get off that horse. Let me get off that. The third key. Now... This should develop an expectation or your attitude. See, those that serve others, one, their they, they humility tells you who they are. Secondly, they are teachable. This is what they become. But now the expectation or the attitude now will reveal again what happens to people now. Now, man, you're talking about blessing others. Your service will always bless others. This gets me in Acts 3. I just, I just, you had, you, you, this talks about the Peter Hill and the crippled beggar. But something jumped out at me in verse 5. They come in and somebody got to bring him in every day. But this particular time, Peter says, Silver and gold have I not, but such as I have. Look, look at this. What get me is the beggar, it says in verse 5, he gave them his attention because he was expecting to receive something. He had the right attitude. When we talk about attitude, Ephesians 4 and 23 says, be ye renewed in the spirit of your mind. What is the spirit of your mind? The, your, your, your attitude about things. He had the right attitude, and so the expectation took place. He was blessed. 
when you have the right attitude about serving others, you can always expect God to bless the people, but you can also expect God to bless you. And this is where it leaves us. Because The church has been managing and maintaining during this whole COVID, managing and maintaining during this whole COVID time. And God is now, as we begin to reset, God is ready to bust a move. The movement that he's looking for is now for us to start revealing unto them what this kingdom is about. And it will bring his glory. What is it about? Your service. See, the, the ministerial gifts will reduce it to just the church, Pastor Wright. But, 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 but the truth be told, when you tap into the motivational, inspirational, what God is looking for is for you to move into the manifestation gifts of the Spirit. And it can't be that the church is scared today of seeing a, a manifestation of the Spirit. Man, I want to see a blind eye open. I want to see a deaf ear and stuff, but you can talk to a lot of people and they are afraid of the. How are they going to see these? The only way we see the manifestations of the gifts of the spirit is going to come through your service for others. I'm telling you, some of y'all are in here right now. Some of you viewing right now, you have a gift, but it won't be revealed or manifest until you start serving others. Keep, don't reduce it to the house. A lot of these things, is, the house is for the training of your gift, the development of your gift. But when it's time for the manifestation of that thing, you're going to have to do that when you're serving others. You got to have an expectation, though. Some of you are walking around here right now with a gift of prophecy, with a gift to, uh, for healing, with a gift of a word of knowledge, with a gift of a, a word of faith, with a gift to discern the spirits. You have all of these gifts. And you're waiting on the church to give you a place to give you the mic, to, to give you a place to, to stand before the pulpit and stand before the people. God is saying, man, the way that it happens is when you start to serve others. Because what this will change now is the inheritance. Man, I'm seeing some awesome, powerful men, God, that have gone on to be with the Lord. But each one of them that I can look in their life, they left something back here, Pastor Ray. They left an inheritance back here. You're talking about Miles Monroe and um, Apostle Fred Price. And our own apostle, Apostle Nate Hokum. These were giants. But they walked in these three things, humility, they were very teachable, and they had an expectation of the right attitude. So that permitted them to always serve others, and they, it helped them to leave a legacy. See, this text, we, this scripture, we hear this a lot of times, and so sometimes we attach it immediately to money. And should we leave some financial uh, assistance? Yes, we should. We should. Planning for the future, yes. But this is not what God was talking about, per se. He is called the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob for a reason. What did he leave them? It, it's a faith inheritance that, you, that he left them. The faith to remember to carry on how you serve others. Abraham was tremendously blessed. But when you go look at his, go look at his lineage, you'll see he was always serving others. 
So a good man, it says, leave an inheritance to your children's children. You mean some of you don't even have the children here yet. But you have, God is saying, your servant to others will leave them an inheritance. And this is what we want to say to you tonight. This is the season that we are in. It's got us assembled us back and you're starting to see the, the, the people of God start to, to come back. I pray and decree that you have the right attitude about this return. That your expectation is in the right one. That that you allow now those that God has appointed over you. He give you leaders now. He talks to you about them. To tell you to obey. Because they give an account for your soul. So you, what are you, we get, don't get caught up in the play on words. You, what you're looking for is, 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 is to hear the voice of God and, 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 and be teachable. Mm -hmm. And then now, God says, at the appointed time, I sent forth my son. And at the appointed time, I'm going to send forth you. That is the prize. We press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling. The mark is that you know him. You get a relationship with him. The prize is that you win him now. You win not only he wins your heart, but you win his. But then for the high calling, I always talk about this. The high calling is sonship. This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. But now when you operate in your call to serve others, now, that's two sons he's well pleased in. That's three sons he's well pleased in. That's four, five, six. It is time now to let the light shine. In that light, I, I, I don't have time to deal with the gifts. In that light, that service to others. And you will see, as it says in there, why a lot of this darkness? Because we don't see enough service to others. We're not going to change the world. He's not calling you to. He called you to change the world. The world's about to do what it do. But what he is calling you to do is to let that light shine. Show them what this kingdom is about. We got these catchy words. People can't understand. We can't minister to nobody. Break this thing down in its simplest form. You ask a believer tell you the kingdom of God. What that mean? They can't even say nothing. To reveal the glory. What is the glory? What that mean? Uh, it's the glory. Uh-uh. God is trying to get you to break this thing down to make people understand. The kingdom of God is about opportunities. And these opportunities come and they will give people a, a glimpse of what God's glory is when others are being served. If others are being served, I told you, Pastor Ray, we won't have homelessness. Joblessness. I had, oh, I, let, me, let me close, let me close. Father, we just thank you. I want to say this over every one of you. you we're going to deal with this later on. But I, pr but I pray for every one of you in this, this vein. 
Look for the opportunity to serve others. Two things take place now when the light shines. Good works are done and God's glory will be given. How does that happen? Look for opportunities. I, I'm, I'm pronouncing this over you. That your, when you look for that opportunity to serve others, now your gift will make room. The gift God having you to heal someone, to, to, to give to deliver, the, the gift to see somebody say, the gift of a word of faith, a word of knowledge, a gift of the discerning. God, God want to see the God want to see this kingdom and his glory. He does. But the only way it happens is when we serve others. Give God a praise. How does this work? Oh, you come on up, Pastor Ray. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise. Woo the gift to serve. Wow. Selah. That's it. Amen. Awesome, 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 awesome. My God, my God. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Come on, Internet Church. Come on, give God some praise. Internet Church, come on, those in the building, you can give God some praise. Come on, God spoke to us tonight through his through his son, through his servant, my goodness, my goodness, Selah, that's all I would say, amen, as they said back in the day, let the church say, amen. <laughs> my, 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 woo-wee, man, I, 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 look, I'm just overwhelmed with that, man, just the, just the teaching and the ministering of the word tonight, sir, Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank God. Come on, let's give God a praise for his word and let's let's be doers of his word. Let's he said look for opportunities. Let's 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 allow the spirit to because the Holy Spirit will speak to us. So allow him to to show you those opportunities. The man of God uh confessed it and professed it over your life that we will see those opportunities. So God, we thank you, we praise you, amen and amen. Selah, amen, amen. Wow. Wow, 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 excited. My goodness. Man, oh, man, oh, man. Woo-wee. Uh. Hey, wow. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Wow, that was awesome. All right, so you know, it's, it's uh, man, that was some good word. I'm trying to, I'm still chewing on it right now. I can't even talk because my mouth is full. I said, y'all didn't even catch that. <laughs> can't even get nothing else out because my mouth is full. I'm still chewing. What an awesome, what an awesome word. My, 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 my. So uh, not, now it's time for tithes, offering, and sacrificial seeds. And Internet Church, you, you know how we do it. We have four ways to give. It should be popping up on your screen accordingly. And you can see we have, met, you know, we have uh, Method 1. Uh, you click the Donate button on the website. It's a safe and secure site. You know we have uh, Text to Give, which is you text your amount and the code to the to 84321. And you know, as you can see that, we have the different codes uh, listed below. We also, you know, like you say, some that you can just, you know, you, you out and about now, you can just drive by and put it in the drop box uh, at, at, at the building, at the executive office. Or you can, you can also call in your credit or debit your credit or debit card you can call the office and someone will pick up you can call 757-820-0717 and you can sow that way we we again we want to sow seed so we can get the the, the word of god out so again i know that god's going to bless you i declare a hundredfold return on your seed and we know that it's going to go to advance the kingdom of God and however it does that. Amen, amen, and amen. 
Praise God. Now, I want to give you some ministry updates. Uh, we have a couple families. We want you to keep them lifted up in prayer. Uh, some things uh, have transpired. Some family members have transitioned. Uh, one of our um, members, Mother Felicity, Felicity Johnson, uh, uh, want to give Mr. Desmond Johnson, the husband of uh, Ms. Johnson, his mother, Ms. Joan Johnson, transitioned earlier this week. Uh, and so they'll be going up to uh, New York, and we want to be praying for them. Also, uh, one of, uh, another one of our sisters, Miss Juanita Owens, her mother uh, transitioned recently, and, and we have information on the service. That service will be held Monday, June 14th at 11 a.m. at Metropolitan Funeral Service located in Portsmouth. So, again, if those, if, you know, send a card or whatever you need to do uh, to let her know that we're praying for her together as a family because she is a part of this family. Also, uh, uh, Miss Pat Motorelli, her sister-in-law transitioned as well, and they'll be traveling up to New Jersey. So we declare uh, uh, safety for them as they are traveling. And one of the things that we also declare that, that, they, that they carry the peace of God that's in their heart. Not only do they carry the peace of God, but they carry a word of God. And even as Pastor Chambers said tonight, we declare that their light will shine through even in this moment that, that, that as they go, that they will bring a word of wisdom, word of encouragement, a, a word that, 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 that will just bring, uh, allow the Holy Spirit to, to comfort the family. And they will carry that with them. And we declare that over them tonight. So again, continue to pray for those families that we lifted up tonight and also now for upcoming uh ministry updates everybody said this saturday come on this saturday this saturday this saturday we have our corporate prayer walk at riverview farm park from 8 to 9 a.m come on you you should be saying you see the slot see the slide right now you said it's from 8 to 9 and that is the the corporate prayer walk man this i know it's gonna be a great time and and y'all know what we're doing what we're, we're, you know you know you can get your you can get your exercise in but at the same time you're 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 claiming territory. I think the Bible says every every place where your foot tread, and if you're walking and praying, you're declaring the works of God. You're you're establishing something. You're you're dropping seed in that place, and so as you begin to declare and walk and speak, you're dropping seed in that place. So so those that that could be there, please be there. Uh, the POC is uh, uh, Miss Talisha Wright. Put that slide up one more time, so so people can see it. There you go, right there. Make sure. But if you can get there, then also this Saturday, this Saturday we have College Impact. We have College Impact this Saturday. It's at 12 noon via Zoom. Come on, you see it right there, College Impact. Look, our lead facilitator uh, of this is our very own, our general overseer, Prophet Vicki Ammons, will be facilitating. So, again, please make sure, uh, look, if you need to take a picture of this slide, you should have got it through your e-blast. But we want, we want all our college uh, uh, people to get on and, and and be a part of this she has the the date the time the zoom id as well as as the passcode so make sure that you that you uh log into that and we also want you to uh because again before i go anywhere this is for our 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 college i think pastor chambers mentioned tonight about leaving a legacy passing the baton and all that this is how the baton is passed it, as a matter of fact the very thing that he talked about he says serving others our general overseer is serving uh, the, 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 the college uh, 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 students and serving in this way. So, again, this is how the baton is passed. So make sure that, that, that all of our college students get, get on, get on board, get log in and hear, what, hear some of the, the training and the teaching. It will benefit you. Amen. And the POC for, for that, I think, is uh, Minister Mia Ferdinand. But, again, take a picture of the slide that's before you. And then I have a save the date for you. I have a save the date for you. We have an hour. We're going to have a one day RCC men's ministry conference. Come on now. We come on. Give God a praise. We're going to have a, it, it's a one day. It's Saturday, June the 19th, starting at 9 30 a.m. Look, we want you to register online. We, it, it's, it's, it's at our RCC VA. Uh, it's on the website. It's on, on the app. You can get there. You can register. It's a $10 registration fee. That fee will cover your lunch. Uh, because 
much will be provided. And, and, and again, this is a time where men can get together and, and just be able to hear the word of the Lord in different, we have different classes going to be set up to speak into every part of your life, right? It's every part of your life. And, and the vision that that, that, that that God gave, and we know it's going to be a blessing. So please, uh, Reggie, your, your husband, your uncle, your cousin, uh, uh, your little cousin, Ray Ray, Pookie, Earl, all, all of them, you know, whatever. <laughs> just just register them all, all right? Because they, they, we want them to come and hear that what, what God has in store for you and how God will cover you and protect you and that there is something that God has placed you on this earth to do and so again please register for that and then we remember we also please check your your e-blast we, we 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 do it we deal with technology in this church we send emails we send all kind of stuff we have a church app so please go on the app go on the app and see what's going on and and in the rcc family please also again make sure you're checking your email everything is there for you that way you are always know what's happening in the house and what we are doing as we advance the kingdom of god and again i uh, just want to say again thank you uh to, to to my friend thank you to this mighty man of god what an awesome word pastor chambers my goodness what an awesome word just to just talk about the service, man. I got to appreciate you. I appreciate Pastor Nidris because one of the things that, that we're doing, even as you talked about serving, that's how we advance the kingdom. We connect together and we advance the kingdom. I remember some apostle uh, preached and, and Prophet Vicky has said it, uh, said it before as well. And they were just talking about, hey, the what this church assignment is and this church assignment is he said we all may not be doing the same thing but we can connect and join and, and that that's how we take care of everything and so it's not, i don't have to or you don't have to or any other ministry even this goes for individual people i don't i know i'm not called to do what somebody else is doing and they're not called to do what i'm doing but guess what we support what you're doing and what god is doing in your life and that's how we impact it has how we impact the nation for God, and that's how we advance it. So, so man of God, thank you so much. Thank you so much. We love you, and, and may God bless you and return to you everything that you gave out tonight. And we know that he, he is. He's a, an amazing God, man. Thank you so much. And again, to, to our RCC family, to those watching by Internet Church, I want to say again, thank you all for joining us. And we, re, and we say to you, may God bless you, and may God keep you, and may God his face shine upon you and give you peace. And we declare it to be so in Jesus' name. We love you, and have a good night. And remember, restoration is now. God bless you. Amen. Amen.